right, so I just finished up uh, my last appointment. Uh, it's the, uh, it was the second appointment today. And uh, it was an old Kawhi KG-3. Um, and that piano is tired. <laughs> it's just, the strings are worn out and the hammers are worn out and it's, it just, the tone is just so deficient now. The guy just doesn't even, he doesn't even want to play it anymore. He's a, he's a church choir director. He's actually a good musician. And the piano is just, it's at the point now. It, it needs to be restrung. It needs new hammer shanks and flanges if he's going to keep it going. Um, but, you know, I told him, at least go and look at some new pianos too. Um, because, you know, a piano like that, I don't want to say it's diminishing returns, but, you know, if you have the money to upgrade the piano, it's a good time to at least think about doing it, because, you know, with the older Asian pianos, they don't tend to do as well tonally as they age. Um, I really found that they can, uh, they can start losing sustain and losing fullness. Um, and, you know, but on the other hand, I, I've had some really good success with some older Asian pianos. With, you know, restringing them, file the capo bar, get it nice and smooth again, change out the bridge pins, um, you know, handle the, um, put better hammers in it. I mean, putting better hammers in a piano alone makes a huge difference. I mean, I've, I've even had good luck with some, like, Young Changs. Young Changs are not some of my favorite pianos, but I've... I've had amazing results with putting better hammers than a Young Chang, even. Um, it makes you wonder why some of these companies don't just spring, I mean, like an extra hundred bucks to buy a better set of hammers and put them in the piano, because it makes a huge difference in tone. Um, so anyway, this this piano, he's, he's going to have to make a decision on whether he wants to spend a little bit more. He really likes shimmels. His church has a shimmel um, that I tune, and it's a really nice piano, and he really loves them, but... Uh, you know, he's thinking about downsizing, so he's not sure if he wants to buy another grand piano or if he wants to just wait. They're thinking about even maybe moving back overseas because um, they lived there for a little while when they were younger. So they're thinking about doing that, in which case maybe buying another piano isn't, uh, isn't the best thing to do. But, you know, he's figuring for, you know, less than $10,000, I can, I can restrain it, put hammers in it, and get it nice and, you know, as good as we can do uh, for what it is. And, you know, at least I'll have a good working piano for the next three to five years. And, uh, you know, he'll probably be able to sell it for about what he has in it. And uh, it'll be a good working piano for somebody. It's a little rough around the edges. The cabinet's got a few dings here and there. But, you know, it'll be a good working piano. It wouldn't be like a decorator piece for somebody. Because he's, you know, he's given this thing a pretty good beating over, uh, over the last 25 years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but... Some of these old pianos have some life left in them. It's just a, it's always a question about whether the money is, is well spent or not. Um, so anyway, um, so now I'm headed uh, not too far from here. Uh, it's probably about a 10 minute drive uh, to a customer. He's got a, a High Loon brand. I think it's a five foot eight model. So not the smallest one. Um, it's a pretty nice little piano. I mean, of, of the Chinese pianos, the high loons are, are pretty good. Um, you know, they can have their quirks. The grands tend to do better, I think, than the uprights. Some of the uprights can uh, can have tons of pedal problems. I've had a lot of issues with squeaky pedals that just seem to not want to go away. And, you know, squeaks that return. And, you know, all kinds of trouble like that. And, you know, those sorts of problems with new pianos are the bane of dealers' existence. You know, because if you're not a if you're not a tech yourself, you're going to be paying a technician to go out to people's houses constantly and fix squeaky pedals, and it just eats up labor costs. It's just you know that's the kind of stuff that'll just eat your profit margins to death. Because cheaper pianos already don't have the greatest profit margin, and then if you're sending a tech out two or three times to fix something like a squeaky pedal, it just kills you. You know, and then the customer's not happy because they bought this piano and it squeaks. So, anyway, it, it's one of the reasons why, you know, I've had good luck with Yamahas because they just, they just work. You know, you rarely have little annoying problems like that with them. They hold tune pretty well. 
for the most part. I mean, it, they've had their uh, they've had their models that were not so great, GH1. <clears throat> so you know, there are a few here and there that were just kind of a mess, but overall, I mean, their designs are simple and they just work. And they, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, so after this Hyloon, then I go to uh, let's see, where do I go after that? Oh, I'm going to work on a Steinway L um, that has some hammer fitting issues. Uh, and the guy is, um, he's getting older, his hearing is, is real sensitive to overtones, and uh, the Steinway, it's just got some, some hammers that are not straight, and some cupping, and some hammers that are not hitting all three strings, so he's getting a lot of extraneous, uh, just noise and buzzy unisons. And, uh, He's also getting some some noise from the uh, from the non-speaking length of the strings and the treble, so I may have to mute off a few of those to, just to reduce it. That's always something you have to deal with on Steinways. Um, so anyway, I'll let you know how these next two appointments go, and uh, talk to you later. Thanks.